Hey everyone, Sam McGuire here from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over something unique today or quite advanced around segmentation or grouping of your data in a dynamic way inside of Power BI. Now this particular example, uh, and we're going to specifically look at just this particular visualization here, um, looks a bit better in, with this background actually. What we have here is we have grouped customers in this case, but it can be any dimension, it doesn't have to be just customers, but we have grouped this based on percentages, okay? And what I mean by that is I've decided to create groups based on top 20% uh, or uh, and then another group of 25 to 80% and then another group of bottom 25%. And I've utilized those percentages and fed them through in a particular DAX formula to then create these groups of top, mid, and bottom. And I've created the segmentation uh, in this particular case by sales. So um, it's a chart showing sales versus margins for any particular time frame, but the segmentation has occurred via sales. And you'll see here that there's a say cutoff point here, and then there's the cutoff point here. Now these particular customers up here are the top 20%, I believe, I'll double check that in a second, but top 20%. These mid customers are the customers who are sitting from a sales perspective um, between 25 and 80%, and then these are the bottom 25% of customers based on sales, okay? And so it's not, it's actually quite, it's a very, it's actually a very advanced technique inside of Power BI utilizing DAX. And that's what I want to um, break out in this particular session. I'll put a link below if you do want to have a look at where all the Learning Summit recordings are located. Um, just requires an upgrade to membership if you want to uh, view them all and, and, um, and download the resources. But uh, this is a really good breakout session, I think, because you'll see you know, how you can incorporate some pretty advanced um, logic inside of calculations to create these um, segments and groups, which just don't exist. So there's, there's nothing in your raw data that exists to, to say, okay, well, let's break out the top 25% of customers, right? And so we need to create that logic using supporting tables or secondary tables, I sometimes call them. So let's go have a look at the table. Let's go and have a look at the groups. And you can probably create these groups in, in, in a number of different ways. But let's just have a look at this here. So the top customer group is the top 20%. Mid is 25 to 80%. And bottom is the bottom 25% of customers. Okay. Now the, the cool thing about this, and, and this is a, a good takeaway here, is that this this type of i guess uh secondary table of percentages can actually be reused in across many different measures because if you think about it we could use sales and work out what our top 20 percent of customers are versus sales but so we could easily integrate margins or profits or costs or any other calculation that you could be doing on anything it doesn't even have to be um, sales or revenue related you can reuse similar logic because percentages can be on anything right and so this is a cool technique to try and you know, really embed because there's various different ways. You just need to create the correct logic inside the formula, which we'll go into in a sec. Okay, so let's dive into it. Let's dive into the formula because I think this is a good one to review. So we've got um, customer sales this year. Okay, so there's a little bit to it. There's a little bit to it. Um, and But what I want to do is I want to focus on the key parts of it, right? Okay, so you've got to think. We want to, uh, and, and then let's just think about what we're trying to show logically here. We want to show the sales of a particular customer, but we want to know what group that customer is in. So we signify that or we filter that by that customer groups table, the one we just looked at with the percentages. Okay. So let's try and um, evaluate this part of the formula first, and then we'll, we'll um, review some of these other ones here. Actually, no, let's review, the, we'll review this one first. So this is how I like to set out the group, this, this grouping pattern or this grouping logic. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tr uh, s s try and understand, okay, well, what what uh, ranking dimension are we going to be working through? Or what what are we going to signify as the um, customer? Or what what what, what dimension are we going to um, iterate through okay in this case it's customers right because we're grouping customers and so what I've done is I've said okay well let's iterate through every single um, customer that has made a sale in any particular time frame and that's what this particular variable does and that's what values does for us 
this next one total customers what this is doing is it's working out how, it's how many customers actually made a sale okay we don't want to you'll see in a second why we don't want this but we don't want just to count up every single customer because what happens is that say for instance we filter a region well not every customer goes and purchases in every region right and so if we just took all customers our results would be skewed and so what we want to do is is to respect any additional filtering that could come on our customers and understand okay well which one of those made sales and we can do that by saying okay well if they made a sale then we want to include that customer and so this customer number becomes dynamic okay and this last one is customer rank now what i'm doing is i'm ranking our customers i'm ranking our customers based on the sales that they have made right and so this particular formula here i will quickly very quickly jump to it this particular format is just doing a simple ranking okay so what this customer what this what this part of the formula is doing is saying well, if a customer has made a sale then let's rank it let's rank them based on the sales that they have made in that particular context okay so it's just a it's just a simple ranking with a little bit of additional logic because we only want to rank the customers which have made sales versus every single customer we don't care about customers that don't make sales uh, we only care about the ones that are okay so that's what so what's going to happen is what we are going to uh, and then now let's look at this so we want to show total sales right so that's what calculate is going to enable us to do but we want to iterate through every single customer and for every single customer in here we want to evaluate through that customer groups table that percentages table that we created we want to evaluate what well, is it the customer rank so is the customer um, rank greater than the total customers, so total customers there, times by, for the top group, 80%. So is the customer ranked higher than the bottom or the lower um, bound or, or lower uh, bin of that table we created? And is the customer rank less than or equal to the total customers time the higher bin of that the higher side of that particular table and so it goes through every single row and it does this so let's let's just go through one example okay so custom it's, it's ranked in an ascending order I believe so if you've got the highest sales you've got the highest rank so if you're say um, the customer with the highest sales out of 100 customers your your customer rank will be a hundred and then so uh, if is if 100 is greater than 100 which is how many customers there are times 80 percent then that would evaluate to true and if the 100 is greater than or equal to the total customers times 0.1 uh, one or 100 percent then that's also going to equal true this would evaluate to true and then that so will so will this and then that customer will be retained and we will get their total sales say for instance a customer is ranked lower well if any of this evaluates then it will only show up if this evaluates to true okay <clears throat> so a little bit to that one a little bit to that one but it's a really interesting one right and can you see how reusable this is as well say you wanted to look at or divide your customers up by a different metric here and you instead wanted to do it by profit margins well literally all you'd need to do is sub in say profit margins there change the rank based on profit margins and then you can utilize exactly the same supporting table and you're away you don't even need multiple um, multiple uh, supporting or secondary tables to run this logic through okay a bit, a bit detailed on this uh, on this one i know i know this one's a little bit more advanced but it's pretty amazing what you can do here right so the, this whole formula what i can do and i this was part of a, a much longer session during during the learning summit which had um, many hundred people um, at it live what what you can do is you can change the time frame right and it will all, always divide up customers by those specific um, percentages. And so that's so much better than opposed to say, like if you had hard coded numbers in that, in, to, to create those bins because you may change the time frame and the numbers just wouldn't apply to that particular time frame. So that's why percentages in this particular case are a really powerful, powerful tool. Um, or a powerful technique and then you can, and then the selection we can still see top 20% top um, your mid-range and bottom 25% 
Okay, that's probably enough for me. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, uh, definitely throw us a like on the um, on the video. Really appreciate it. And and also don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise TNA TV. Heaps of really um, analytical content on Power BI coming out um, very soon. Love showcasing this sort of stuff. So look forward to getting it out to you. Okay, all the best.